Hi folks, hope you're okay today, it's good to be with you. Uh, I just want to give some advice uh, to theology students uh, out there who are actually um, engaged in academic study in theology, uh, principally Christian theology. Um, I did a four year degree at uh, Nazarene College in Ditchbury and uh, I did four years there full time and then I went on to another institution and I did eight years altogether um, so I did four years at NTC and I did uh, two study two 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 years at MA level at um, Luther King House and um, so there's at least eight years of academic study uh, in, in theology full time <coughs> so I, I'm kind of qualified to be able to give you some advice as students um, about um, how to conduct yourself and, and what to, to do when you're in theological seminary. Um, I think first of all make sure that before you get to theological seminary that you have a, a theological grounding. So before you even get to theological seminary have a read of some theological works like um, Charles Hodge Systematic Theology, Herman Bavinck's uh, Reformed Dogmatics, um, Louis Burkhoff's Systematic Theology. Um, try and kind of read some good sound Christian books before you get to theological seminary. Because even if you go into a sound theological seminary, you're going to be challenged. Theological seminaries generally try to break your preconceptions, try to give you cognitive dissonance. So what they're trying to do is they try to show that you are ignorant and that you need to be grounded in their theology or their way of thinking. Um, so it's going to be a shock for you when you're, sorry, when you're in seminary because you're going to get new ideas thrown at you. Sorry, I get an itchy nose. You're going to be challenged um, and uh, it's going to be uncomfortable for you. So you, you, if you haven't got a grounding in theology uh, or Christian teaching, you're going to find it very, very difficult. Uh, and if you go to a sound seminary, you, you perhaps be, uh, you get just about get through. But if you are in a, an unsound seminary, it, it, you might even... Uh, be tempted to lose your faith. So I'd encourage you to um, read some of the great Christian classics, uh, read some of the more orthodox literature um, like Lenski's commentaries on the New Testament or um, William Hendrickson on the New Testament and uh, re read some of the orthodox material uh, that will help you before you get to to seminary, you know. Um, a, a book that you can read uh, before you get to seminary is this book, Presbyterian and Reformed Publishing Company, The Doctrine of the Knowledge of God by John M. Frame. would be a good book to read uh, to help you. Uh, and this basically goes into the theory of knowledge and how it relates to theology and uh, it will be a help to you um, so yeah um, and, it, and if you go to John Frame's website uh, there's lots of academic resources on the website by him and Vern S. Poitras Vern S. Poitras and John Frame have a website <coughs> and there's a lot of books you can download there on various topics like mathematics, science, inerrancy. There's lots of resources there for a student, theology student to read, to help you, to arm you as you go into theological seminary. 
<coughs> so that's my first point. Uh, prepare yourself. It's it's going to be a bit of a shock <coughs> when you get to seminary. You're going to have all your I preconcep preconceptions and your ideas shaken. The theological lecturers there are, are there to, <coughs> in their eyes, <coughs> not just make you grounded, but to make you think. So they're going to challenge you, and it's going to be uncomfortable. And if you've not got a grounding in the faith, you're going to be shaken. That's my first point. My second point is make sure that when you're at seminary that you've got a strong church that you are associated with and that you are part of while you're at seminary. The reason is, is when you're in academic study uh, you, be you become so, so busy you've got very little time to develop your spiritual side of your life. Now maybe your se seminary might have a good chaplain chaplaincy where you get you get fed spiritually you might have a good bible study group within your theological seminary but chances are many theological seminaries to seminaries today um, there's not actually a strong spiritual input within in the seminary there's not a strong chaplaincy where they're actually preaching good sermons and, and building people up spiritually the 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 balance is too much gone the academic way and so the chances are that your spiritual life will suffer while you're studying theology ironically so the way to counteract that is you need to be strongly rooted in a local church with a pastor or a, a leadership that love the word of god and teach the word of god because um, you need your, your, your life fed spiritually as well as intellectually and academically. And you need to get to church, you need to be at the church, Bible study, be at the church, services. Because in your worshipping, in, in worshipping the Lord, all that you're learning intellectually will be grounded practically. And you need to hear from God through the preaching of the word. And also you need to be part of the body of Christ. Very often in theological seminary, um, you can be cut off from church. And they can also, they can develop within you without you realising it, a snobbishness towards the church. Because you feel you're learning more than your average churchgoer. And you can have a kind of spiritual intellectual snobbery. And, and part of that is because you're cut off from church. You're in a, a kind of um, make-believe environment where it's not the real world, but you're in this bubble of theological seminary, but you're not interacting with Christians, you're not interacting with the church. And so you can, without realising it, be cut off from church life. Even in an orthodox seminary, that can happen where you're too busy in your academic studies to be involved in church life. So make sure you find a spiritual base when you go to seminary, while you're at seminary. Thirdly, find a pastor, a godly uh, past man who's been to seminary, who, who has done the rounds as it were. But find someone who is spiritually minded and has done the rounds. I, I had a minister, an Anglican minister, who was a Pentecostal Anglican minister when I was at Theological Seminary. And I used to be able to go to him and he, and he really, really helped me to work things through when I was at seminary. And he provided me with extra notes to be able to work things through. So have a confidant, have a pastor who has been through academic studies but who is orthodox, who is evangelical, who you can go to from time to time for advice on essays, advice on questions concerning your studies, and also any personal issues that you have. Next, I would advise that you have Christians, a prayer group, before you go to seminary, while you're at seminary, a prayer group of friends that you've asked to pray for you while you're at seminary. So ask people to pray that 
that while you're at Sami, they, they can they cover uh, covenant to pray for you and ask people to pray for you while you're at seminary, so that you're not infiltrated by false teaching. Uh, next, I would advise. Um, that you would read widely. Your particular theological seminary will try to in, in, in indoctrinate you with their particular view. Um, and in some cases that might be excellent. So you might be at the Covenant Theological Seminary or Southern Baptist Theological Seminary and they, they will be teaching sound theology. And they'll try to imbibe that to you. So that that's good. But generally, a lot of theological seminaries, they're not as sound as they should be. And they'll try to ingrain their way of thinking upon you. So you need to read widely. You need to make sure that you read sound literature, but also widely. So you, you, you get a, bright, a broad breadth of, of theology <clears throat> and in your theological seminary you'll have a, a, a book list you'll be given a book list for the year or for the semester and each module you're given you're given a book list and your theological lecturer will, will recommend various books on that book list but all the books that they're recommending and the book that they're using for the module or for that semester is is what they want you to read so that they get you to think the way you want they want you to think so you need to do a little bit of extra work where you gather and read from wider sources that even your seminary are not telling you about so you get a wider view a wider understanding um, so for example uh, we were given uh, a semester on uh, Christology and we were given certain books to read and we had some lectures on Karl Barth and the lecturer gave us his spiel his view of Karl Barth but I went and did extra research and read extra literature and was able to see that the, the lecturer that he was lecturing to us didn't really fully understand what he was talking about when he was talking about Karl Barth so you need to go and do your extra research, your extra study, read widely things that even your lecturer's not putting you onto, you know. And and also make sure that you always stay close to the orthodox material. So for example on Karl Barth, there's excellent lectures by Francis Schaeffer on Karl Barth, lectures by Van Til on Karl Barth, there's a good book by Van Til on by by Van Til and Karl Barth, so that you get an author, you can find material that gives you an orthodox view on that particular topic. Uh, Karl Barth's being a neo-orthodox theologian. Next piece of advice, I would say enjoy your studies. Uh, your studies only come uh, once in a while, you know, but it's a time, a great time for taking in, a great time for, for studying, so enjoy it. Uh, don't try to do too much. You know, if, especially if you're a, if you've got a family, and you've got children. You know, the temptation is to do a lot of ministry while you're at theological seminary, but if you do too much ministry while you do at theological seminary. Your your studies will suffer. You need to balance it out. Make sure that you put you're there to study, so make sure you put the time in and make that your priority. You can't um, be in full-time study and pastor at the same time. Um, it's very, very difficult. You can do it, but your studies will suffer. So you need to say, well, my priority at the moment is study and, I, and I'll give my time to that. I can help in my local church a little bit, but I can't take too much responsibility till I finish my studies. And so the temptation is, I, I pastored a church for uh, a year or two while I was at Theological Seminary and it, it does make your studies suffer 
because you're, you're, you're preparing sermons and you're preparing Bible studies and you're doing evangelism and, and you need, if you're full time, you need to be a student, you need to be focusing on your studies really. Um, pick your battles wisely. Don't um, think that you can fight your theological faculty <laughs> and put them right and put the students right because what that'll do is just cause unending conflict and it'll spoil your time of studying. You know, sometimes you'll you, you'll find that some lecturers are not as sound as they should be. They may be weakened on important doctrines because a lot of these academic theologians get infiltrated by the university and they, they move away from orthodoxy and you might spot that and you might want to call them out on that. And you need to pray about what God wants you to do in that situation and pick your fights wisely. When I was in seminary I went and rebuked lecturers left, right and centre within the first two weeks. I even rebuked the principal. One theological, one lecturer resigned because of me because I challenged them that they they'd left inerrancy and and uh, they realized they had and they they were upset with the the college so they they resigned that lecturer now is a a famous theologian now um, but it didn't do any good in the end because uh, it, it distracted away from what I needed to be doing which is studying studying uh, and, and uh, f sort of working on the course that I was had embarked on. So, you know, you've got to be careful. Um, a, a, an example is uh, Fuller Theological Seminary was deviated on inerrancy and uh, Wayne Gruden, when he was a student, he fought tooth and nail, he fought the faculty and he challenged the faculty. You know, and he felt that was the right thing to do. So you need to pray about what is the right thing to do in your situation and to only fight the battle that God wants you to fight. But I, I would advise that theological seminary is an artificial environment. And you're in the system there. You need to just get your degree, get out and fight when you get out. You can tell people, I've told people, I told people in the particular denomination where the seminary was connected to and I warned people about the dangers of inerrancy and the dangers of the scholarship, but nobody really listened and nobody took it on board. Um, so my advice would be to just study, get your degree and get out and then fight, then tell people that the college is fallen, the college has gone this way, that way and people need to wake up. But if you fight while you're at seminary it's probably going to damage your studying because y your lecturers are going to mark you down less because they don't like you and the students are going to be angry at you and it will produce an environment where you can't study where you can't focus. But maybe you need to make a stand. Maybe uh, your seminary was sound and they've pretended that they're sound and you've gone to seminary and they're not sound. Maybe you need to leave that seminary and go to a seminary that's sound and sound the alarm in your denomination and say, you know what, you departed from the faith, I'm going to this seminary where the where the sound and and sound the alarm. Maybe you need to do that. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. Um, but I'm just saying that you need to focus on your studies and getting your, your qualification as well. And you've got to balance that. Balance up whether it's right to fight and sound an alarm or whether it's whether just to get on with your studies. My advice is to get on with your studies and fight afterwards and sound the alarm afterwards and chances are most theological seminaries very few will be sound 
So the chances are the advice that I'm giving you will be for most students. Most of you students, if you're evangelical, will be in a theological seminary that has probably weakened on some fundamental doctrine and you're concerned about it and you're wondering how to deal with it and this advice might be a help to you. Okay? But ask God to give you wisdom in that situation. But just remember that you need to be studying and you don't want it to hinder your study so you maybe you need to sit back and say well this is the wrong seminary that I'm in and I'm going to go to another seminary or if I'm at the seminary uh, I'll I'll deal with the stuff that they're throwing at me and I'll have a word with the principal or the lecturer involved and I'll just get on with my studies you know but you for me I just got my head down and I did sound the alarm right at the beginning and then I got my degree and then I sounded the alarm afterwards but nobody took any notice but I did make I did make a stand I did stand up in the first few weeks when I was at seminary I made a, a stand but I was up against it because the, it was all sewn up that all all the lecturers all the students were all of one a particular mind where they doubted the word of god they doubted they, they brought in academic stuff that was undermining the word of god but i made my stand but to no avail you know and then i had to just get on with my degree and then at the end i made a, a i made a, another stand at the end but to no avail they just wanted to go there uh, kind of postmodern academic way, you know. Um, what else? Had, what advice? What what other advice? In in doing your essays, you can't read all the books for your essay, you know. Uh, you need to learn to target your time where uh, rather than read I like I like to read whole books when I was doing an essay that's not wise what you need to do is find the key essays key articles that you need to read get get the information synoptic in a synopsis of information like an outline of the information of each key article and the little bits of quotes that you need for each from each article so in other words you've got to try to um, be efficient with your time go to the main essays or main articles or main books and get the right chapter the right quote basically they're just looking for that you understand that material and that you can engage with it it's not the amount of material that you you're looking that you've looked at but it's whether you understand the material and whether you can engage with it in argument so so just make sure that you rather than try and read a thick book <laughs> on that topic just pick a few articles get the general idea of the article and their arguments and then sort of be able to present their arguments and critique their arguments and using other uh, sources, other scholars that are against the particular argument that you're dealing with and what they're looking for in the essay is whether you can actually understand the d the issues and the debate that is going on and the material that you've read and whether you can engage with it in argument giving your evidence and conclusion okay so that's all they're looking for and the, the quicker you can uh, get your information reduce it to a simple pinpoints of what the arguments are and the quicker you can do that the more efficient your time will be and then what they're looking for in your essay is that you can engage in argument can engage in listening to what the other argument is and then present counter arguments using other scholars um, and that you understand the material that you're quoting okay um, what else is there? Yeah, make sure you, you sign up to the library, 
the Theological Seminary Library. And also, if there's a university nearby, and other libraries link up with them, because you'll get more uh, research material. Um, so I, I was connected to two or three libraries that I could go and get material from. Um, when in class, be careful not to ask too many questions because you'll get on the nerves of the other students. Um, when in class, try not try to engage with in with people in discussion. Rather than say you're wrong, you're wrong, ask the student if you're in a discussion it with the student. Um, and maybe the student's gone off beam or something and you disagree with the student. But just have a, an ear to listen to what they're saying and engage with their argument or engage with what they're saying. Rather than try to oppose them, listen to them and then engage with their argument. And that will help you to uh, th be a better thinker and be able to crystallise in your own mind why you oppose certain views or certain arguments. Um, yeah, I think each theological seminary has its own ethos and uh, it's very difficult in your first year to kind of work out what the ethos is uh, because your curriculum is presenting a, a, a kind of very very cleverly thought out strategy or plan to produce the kind of leaders that they want so the courses that you're doing they've thought it through whichever seminary it will be that have thought it through and they'll have a particular ethos a way of thinking that they're trying to get you to be like through the course and you will never spot that in the first year it'll be very difficult to spot but as you go on in the year you gradually begin to see where they're coming from but at the beginning of the year it'll be very difficult because every one of the modules every one of the courses that you're doing will have this one main aim and it, and it will be a particular ethos that they have underlying their academic study so uh, for example at NTC uh, their main ethos was holiness Nazarene theology which was holiness theology but underneath that um, they had a very strong ethos in making people think giving people uh, the ability to think and they were very very strong on that so when you did the courses, it's like, boom, you just like challenge from left to right because they're just trying to make you think. At, at um, Luther King House, their ethos uh, was uh, a very um, strong on understanding culture and understanding... Uh, having uh, certain uh, contextual tools to engage in theology. So they, they were into contextual theology. So a lot of their modules and courses reflected this kind of style of theology. And basically it's to make you more of an anthropologist <laughs> than a, a pastor or a preacher, but to be able to understand different cultures. That was their ethos, you see. And, uh, and, e and, and and the ethos will produce a kind of sense of superiority. So there was a sense of superiority in NTC students that they knew more and could think better than the average Christian. And the same in the Luther King house, there was a sense of superiority that were more culturally sensitive 
than the average church goer, especially the uh, conservative evangelicals, were much more open and sensitive to other cultures and were superior in that way. It wasn't stated like that, but there was this in, inherent psychological thinking that you'd imbibe without realising it. So you've got to be aware because you'll catch that like measles without realising it. Whatever the ethos of the theological seminary is, you'll catch it like a measle without realising it. And chances are most of the theological seminaries have a wrong ethos. There'll be very few, like Southern Baptist Theological Seminary have an ethos. They, they, they are training for pastor preachers. Now that's a good ethos and, and it's a good thing and if you catch that like a measle, hallelujah. But a lot of theological seminaries uh, have a, a, an ethos that's not healthy, not good. And if you're not aware of that, you'll catch it like a measle. So you, again, you've always got to be grounded in the Word of God, grounded in orthodox teaching, otherwise you're going to come out messed up, corrupted without realising it. Um, is there anything else? The value of theological seminary, um, there's a value in studying for two, three, four years. Even going to a seminary that's not as sound, there's still value in it. There's value in education and having a wide perspective on things because when you, you know, if your seminary can be sound and be teaching sound theology, then you're going to, you're going to go into church as a pastor or as a missionary grounded in the Word of God. So for, to study for three, four years the Word of God is it, a wonderful thing and it gives you a background and a resource to teach and preach and evangelize. But if your seminary is not sound even then it's still worth studying because you have a wider perspective on issues that your conservative brother and sister will not have. Um, so I mean in my degree we had to tackle philosophy, we had to tackle sociology, psychology, we had to tackle all sorts of different topics and um, when you're in church and you're pastoring and doing mission very often people come with their own um, theological peculiarities and if you've studied widely it gives you that graciousness that graciousness to deal with people um, whereas if you haven't had that wider study uh, you can even though you're from a sound theological seminary you can you can be a little bit intolerant of people uh, who may be a bit quirky in their theology um, and not know how to deal with people, not know how to engage with people uh, on a practical pastoral level uh, because you're so boxed in and not able to uh, understand where people are coming from or how to deal with people. Whereas if you've read widely, studied widely and had to think about issues when you meet people, yes, you deal with it in a biblical way, but you can look at things in a wider perspective, and you can see that person from a wider, wider perspective. Um, so there is value in studying in a seminary that doesn't seem to be as sound as it should be. So those are some of my advice for theology students. Uh, I hope that's been a blessing to you and. Just enjoy your study, uh, just do the best for, you, for the Lord, always keep to the good solid material, old material. Uh, make sure you have a spiritual life as well as an academic life. Try to get your studies in balance with your other life, whatever that life is. Um, pit your battles wisely, pray where God wants you to fight and where not to fight. 
and um, just remember that God's called you this is an important thing but just remember there are times when you you want to give up it at seminary there are times when you just wonder what's it all about the BSAs that you've got to get in and you'll be so down and so discouraged um, and, and you'll just feel like want, you want to give up and in that time just remember that God has called you remember your call remember God brought you to that seminary he's brought you there for a purpose there's a reason why you're there it, it might be confusing it might be difficult for you you might not like it at the moment it might be uncomfortable for you it might be too difficult for you but God has put you there and he'll help you even though you might feel overwhelmed especially in the first year of academic study and then the last year when you've got to get your final assignment in your dissertation and rest and you just feel oh I can't do it I'll never do it and there are times that I wanted to give up there are times that I felt inadequate but if you turn to God and, and, and lean on Him, He will help you through it. He will get you through. Um, it says in Jeremiah 1, 5, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. And God's called you into ministry. And he's provided an opportunity for you to study. So he's, he's going to be with you in that. He'll help you in every area of your need. He'll help you. And he'll provide for you. As he's called you to study. So always remember that God has called you. Always go back to that. When you feel like giving up. When you feel you can't do it. Always remember that God has called you. And if he's called you, he'll provide for you. He'll help you. And he will help you uh, in your studying. There were times when I had to get essays in and I thought I'd never be able to do it. I'll never, ever pass. There were times when it was just too difficult. It was times when I just wanted to give up. But I remember that God was with me. And God will be with you in the midst of your studying. Alright? And there's nothing better when you finish your studies and you get your degree... You know, it's a, it's a special moment uh, and it's a, and a great achievement uh, that, that God has helped you to, do, to achieve that. And uh, so, uh, just remember that God has called you, okay? Thank you for listening and God bless you. I'm going to pray for you and for your studies. And uh, I recommend... Two people that kept me strong in theological seminary, and um, and that was uh, Dr. Martin Lloyd Jones and Francis Schaeffer. When I was at seminary, I always had them behind me. I didn't know them personally, but their ministry, their life really really helped me to keep strong at seminary dr martin lord jones go to his recording trust you can listen to logic on fire which is a documentary but logic on fire um, and is a documentary about him also the biography by ian murray is very helpful and also if you go to his his website dr martin lord jones Recording Trust. Then also Francis Schaeffer. Uh, Francis Schaeffer, uh, he's wrote, he wrote many books. But if you go on to Labrie Fellowship, you can listen to Francis Schaeffer lectures. And these two guys and their life and their ministry kept me strong at, at seminary. Because I listened to their sermons, I listened to their lectures and it just kept me focused on the truth even though at seminary the truth was being undermined 
they kept me strong in the truth. Okay? So I'm going to pray. Father God, I confess my sin and I acknowledge my guilt and I acknowledge my need of you. And I pray, Father, for the students here today, those who have just embarked on their studies and those who are about to finish their studies. Father, you've called them and I pray for each student today that they would remain strong in your word that they would realize that they are a privileged people to have study or to study. I pray, Lord, that you keep them on the sound theology and, and the pure word of God. I pray that they would be balanced in their <coughs> academic studies and that they'd be spiritually minded as well as academically minded. I pray each student listening to this video would be strong in you and father would go on to be great servants of you working for you lord preaching the word of god so bless each student lord fill them with your love and grace and power and meet every need they have in jesus name amen amen thank you for listening and god bless you don't forget my website, jasonburnspreacher.com. You can also look me up on Facebook and Twitter. So God bless you. Take care.